Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, this is another video in a multi-part series on refresher videos based on the pattern design software in AccuMark. Um, just as an FYI, these videos are created specifically for a group of students who are taking my course. And if you are not one of my students and perhaps in the industry or at another college, um, I may teach things in a different way than your professor may teach them. So um, please just be advised if you see something done differently um, than how you've learned before there's multiple ways to do things on this program so um, I may have a bit of a different method than what you've learned in uh, previous courses so uh, moving forward this video is going to focus specifically on um, the advanced tab and using some of these fullness tools and uh, the reason we're gonna have a video just dedicated to this is because um, they do require a bit more explanation and um, they are a bit more of an advanced tool, pardon the pun, they're in the advanced tab, it's an advanced tool. Um, when you start adding fullness to a garment, um, you're usually doing that for a design reason of some kind. So I just wanted to kind of be able to explain along the way, like why you might be adding fullness somewhere, um, as well as how to do it. So we are going to start with this tool right here, which is fullness on the line. And this is to add or remove fullness evenly to, oops, sorry, I missed that, to a selected line. Now I'm going to start here with our sleeve. Um, the reason I'm using the sleeve is because I feel like it's the easiest to kind of demonstrate why you might want to add fullness into a garment or into a certain piece of the garment. So um, this here is just your regular short sleeve. It's part of the dress model. Um, and what I'm going to show you is how we add either A, fullness into the sleeve cap here. And if you were to add fullness into the sleeve cap, you would end up with a puffed sleeve that was fitted at the bicep. Or we could add fullness into the bicep line, which is um, that would give you a fitted uh, shoulder cap that then puffed out and you could either have that just kind of hanging loose or it could pull back in um, in like a band on the arm or you could actually add fullness to both of these and that's how you get a puff sleeve that puffs out at the cuff and then also has fullness all the way down that you could then bring back in with the band around the arm so I'm going to first show you how we're going to put some fullness along this line right here which would be a fitted cap with a puff at the bicep we're going to use this online tool and it says here we're going to follow our user input box select line for fullness so what line are we adding the fullness to we want to add the fullness to this line right here i'm going to click on that then it's going to ask us what line are we slashing to so in a sleeve we're going to go ahead we're going to slash up to the shoulder cap okay so we're going to click on that it's telling you select the hold line. Um, that's basically what part of the pattern piece do you want to stay still. Now, you would almost want your grain line to be able to stay still, but since we don't have a line there to select, I'm just going to select our um, side seam line here. So I'm going to select, select that. Now, um, the value input, when I type a number into here, that's actually going to calculate as inches. So I want you to see that right here I've got 12.87 measurement for this bicep line, um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put, we're gonna add two inches. So just, we're gonna put a two. You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna hit okay. And see, it gave me two extra inches of fullness in here. 14.87 is now the measurement. And it adjusted our shoulder cap for us. So it really does a nice job of just altering that pattern piece. Now you've got a little bit more fullness at the bicep line. Um, two inches probably wouldn't quite be enough to create like a really nice, like if you're trying to do like a leg of mutton sleeve or something like that. Um, but it would add like a little bit of uh, ease and fullness for you there. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do it one more time. So I'm going to undo it. I'm going to do on the line, select line for fullness. We're going to do this line here, select line to slash to, which is the shoulder cap. We're going to hold with our side seam line. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add in, I'm going to add in eight inches. So eight inches is a lot. That's almost doubling the width of the bicep of the sleeve. So that's quite a bit of fullness in your sleeve. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit eight, and and yeah, you can kind of see how much that changed our pattern piece. See how wide and big it is here. And if you were to either A, leave that open, you'd kind of have this nice fluttery sleeve effect, or B, if you did a gathering or a pleating to bring it 
into the circumference of the bicep, you'd have a really nice shape um, that the fabric will kind of either puff out or um, you see it a lot in kind of 30s type sleeves, um, basically vintage type sleeves all across um, the past 300 years, but more so like 30s um, and then like 1890s. Those are kind of where you'd see that that fullness that gets brought in at the bicep line. So we're going to hit OK. I'm going to undo that just so we can now go and see what it's going to look like if I want to add fullness here, if I want to add fullness just at the shoulder cap. I'm going to go ahead one more time. The line I want for fullness is the shoulder cap. The line I want to slash to is the bicep line. I'm again going to select my side seam as the hold. I'm just going to add in five inches. And see, it gave me five inches in that cap. It keeps in here this curve that would be going down under the arm. I, I know a lot of time when we slash and puff, we tend to lose that curve. That curve is extremely important because if you don't have that curve, your sleeve will not fit into your armhole properly. You'll get this weird little puckering of fabric um, right where your sleeve should go underneath your arm. So you wanna make sure you keep, you keep these nice curves in there, okay? So the next thing we're going to actually take a look at is this parallel um, fullness right here. This is how you add or remove an amount of fullness evenly um, to both sides. And the kind of sister to this is the tapered, where if you want to add or remove fullness um, just from one side and the other side will be held at zero. So I'm going to show you the parallel first. And I'm going to use our bodice right here as the example. And let's say, let's say you wanted to put like some rouging, that the line, the rouging lines came across like this, um, kind of going up onto the shoulder seam. So we're going to, the user input telling us to create slash lines from pivot end to open end. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select here because it's going to be my pivot end. I'm going to come across like this, come across parallel to my shoulder seam. That's my end where I want the slash line to be, to be done. And then once I've created, I've already created my slash line, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit okay. And it says select, um, select a part of the pattern piece you wanna remain stationary. So I'm gonna have this piece remain stationary, clicking on it. Yeah. Select internal line to move. I'm gonna move this line. And there we go. See, so now I can move however much I want this to open. And if we kind of just take a look really quick at the distance, see over here, it's giving me the number. So if I want this to open up, you know, say just an inch, I would bring it down to an inch. If I wanted to bring it up, you know, four or five inches, I can use that distance box to determine how much it's gonna open. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, and now I've got my fullness there that if I was gonna go ahead and sew this, I would do a gathering stitch here, a gathering stitch here, you would rouge the fabric in, and then you would place this pattern piece on top of either a lining or an interfaced piece. So um, that could kind of hold the structure underneath it. And you have this really beautiful rouging along the shoulder lines. I'm gonna undo it. Let's go ahead and do the tapered, just so you can kind of see. So create a slash line from pivot end to open end. So again, remember what this user input box is telling you. It's telling you pivot end to open end. So if I want this to be my opening here, like if I want my fullness to be not here and like spread out this way, so I have to select my pivot end first. So I'm gonna select my pivot end here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bring this line over to that seam. I'm gonna click. So it says we're gonna hit okay. Now select location to remain stationary. We're gonna select this line right here. Select internal lines to move. And now it's actually, see how it's pivoting along the point, the first point I selected? So that's important because if I had put my pivot over here, then this would be opening over here and we wouldn't be getting the effect we wanted to. So see, it's gonna swing open like that for you, or we could even close it if we wanted to. We're gonna swing it open just a little bit, just to get a little bit of rouging there. And see, now it almost looks like a dart. Now the system will not read that shape as a dart, 
but it does look similar to what a dart would look like. But that's up to you as the designer to then um, mark on your pattern that in here there's rouging, that it doesn't get cut, and that it creates some kind of design aesthetic that you're looking for. One uh, little note also is you would then go and take this um, grain line and you would move it and rotate it to still be straight over here. Okay. So uh, one last thing, I'm going to show you guys how to do the slash and spread, which um, is a really great technique. Say we want to add fullness to this, this sleeve here evenly across the sleeve. Um, we want it to have more puff both at the sleeve cap and at the bicep. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to do parallel. Parallel. Select pieces to perform slash and spread. I'm going to select my sleeve. Now it's asking me to create slash lines from pivot end to open end. End selection to continue. Now, if I wanted to say go ahead and start from the center and then do lines like coming out this way evenly, the system gets confused. It works in one direction. Remember, it works in clockwise direction. So we also have to go from bottom up. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, I'm just going to kind of eyeball some even lines up the sleeve. This guy here. We're going to put one up the middle. One here. Now, in the real world, you want to make sure these are like nice and even. So that way your fullness gets added evenly across your pattern piece. Okay, so I've created all my slash lines. Um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to hit OK to continue. Now it's asking select, select, select location to remain stationary. Now, I did select slash and spread parallel, so I don't know if this step matters as much, but I'm going to go ahead and select that line. Select piece to create spread. Okay, now, see, I can already go ahead and I can open up the first line. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click, I'm going to drop that there. Now it's letting me open up the next line. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to drop. I'm going to just scroll up a bit so we can see. And now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to drop that piece there. Now it's having me do the other end. See, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to drop. And my last piece, I'm going to go ahead and drop. Now, it was giving me the number in here, how far I was widening each piece. So you can um, make sure that you're widening by the same amount. If you do value mode and enter like two inches there or one inch or whatnot, um, you can also just watch that number and see how far am I spreading my pattern pieces um, apart. So this is the final project product. It's um, It does look a little funny. It kind of almost gives you like if you were going to do pleats, Instead, if you are not going to do pleats, if that's not your goal, what I would then recommend is redrawing this shoulder curve here because it's it's just too jagged. Um, with you go into create, you'd use your two point curve, you'd redraw this shoulder cap here, and you'd also kind of redraw this line in here and make sure you have a nice smooth pattern pieced line. Um, but that's basically how we use those three tools in the advanced tab over fullness. Um, they are a really great tool if you are trying to add like any kind of rouging, any kind of um, flouncing, um, and you want to make sure that your pattern piece is created correctly. So what you're dreaming in your head actually happens in real life. So I hope you found this really informative. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the caption below.